Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, folks. The reason for the delay was I had Missouri IRS, well, send a certified letter that had to be signed for that told me they did not do what they were supposed to do and take the 361 out of what taxes they sent me. Thankfully, I had the money to pay. I'm just slightly annoyed. Like, all oh, this could have been avoided. You didn't get any of... Wait, you didn't respond to any of your notices. I didn't get any of the notices, genius. Good God. But anyways, welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. We are going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do, the disclaimers... And hopefully nothing else interrupts my day today. Because holy crap, can a girl have a day off? Ugh. In the description box, folks, if you are unfamiliar with the Stop the Shocks campaign or the campaign against the troubled teen industry, inside there you're going to find all the pertinent links, please, in particular. Take note of the article written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by autistics for autistics. They interviewed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the Judge Rotberg Educational Center's so-called behavior modification program. The Judge Rotberg Educational Center does not want you to read that article so much. They have threatened Neuroclastic with defamation lawsuit. They did not remove it from the website. So, folks, read the article. Share it on all your social media. You're also going to find linked in there Neuroclastic's public statement regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding in case the JRC actually decides to see through with their threat. All right, trigger warning one, folks. When we discuss places like the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center and Agape Boarding School for Boys, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of disabled people and people with mental health issues being tortured and abused. If you do got young children present, please utilize the headphones, all right? Trigger warning two, this channel. It's marked not for kids for a reason. We use profanity on occasion and do speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and they are watching this, very obviously parental supervision is advised. This particular video may be long or short because I do want to cover this and I'm probably going to bust up that there into two different vids or at least try. So, you know, be prepared for that. Okay, where we left off. For those reasons, 396 does not unambiguously foreclose the FDA's reading of the statute at Chevron's first step. Again, I'm going to mention the fact that I don't think you all understand the point. Because your argument, even this dude who's supposedly on the FDA's side here, is missing the point completely. That point being that at no point in time did the FDA pass its approval of the current device in use that is in question here. Okay? This isn't tailoring. This isn't saying that you can use the GED for this, but not for this. It is an out-and-out -out ban. The language in the 2020 decision couldn't be more clear, but apparently we're going to have to continue with this idiocy, so let's finish the paragraph, shall we? We then move on to Chevron's second step, which we defer to, uh, to the FDA's interpretation as long as it's reasonable and consistent with the statute's purpose. Again, this is what's annoying me. It's this guy who's supposedly on our side can't seem to figure out the fact that what he's assuming that the FDA is trying to do is completely and utterly incorrect on every single level incorrect, like badly incorrect, as in 
What were you smoking when you wrote this incorrect? The argument being had is not the argument that should be being had, okay? Because these folks are operating off of this assumption that the FDA is saying that the GED is being banned for specific kinds of treatment. When that is literally not what happened here when that decision went through in 2020. The FDA, in no way, shape, or form, when I read that decision and then reread it in light of reading this, like it's not even left up for interpretation. The language is extremely clear. They are not saying anywhere that we are banning the device for this use, but not for this use. They just said they're banning the device. This argument over whether the FDA is allowed to tailor in regards to what a device can be used for and what it cannot makes no coherent sense because this is, okay, this, uh, okay. This is me, DC Circuit Judge, and this is the point. <sighs> It didn't just go over their heads. It did a few loop-de-loops. It turned left and made a left turn. Okay? They're not seeing the point whatsoever. They are overturning this decision based off of assumptions. Folks, what do they say about assumptions? Instead of going to the FDA and asking them to clarify the decision, which reading it, it's pretty idiot proof, but okay, whatever. They could have gone to the FDA and asked them to clarify things. Instead of doing that, they made assumptions on how they think the FDA was interpreting 396, assumptions on the device actually being legally marketed when it never was, making the assumption that the FDA previously approved this device, a fact that they have not approved this device that has been multiple made multiple times by the FDA themselves throughout the paperwork, starting all the way back at the beginning in the 2014 paperwork from the hearings, all the way up to the 2020 decision. And this is how we got here, folks. Once again, people with disabled people and our safety is once again put on back burner in the name of some pencil pushing bureaucrat willfully completely misunderstanding things and then pulling a judgment out of their ass based off of nothing 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 and uh, DC, don't even freaking start with me, okay? I've read this decision of yours. You miss every single point in alphabetical order. You didn't treat, try to read into what you think the FDA is reading into a law without getting clarification from the FDA. Then you're going to throw in states' rights and the usual Republican talking points and then throw out this decision and just expect people like me to swallow it. Uh, let's finish the paragraph, right? 
I believe it is. So this dude believes that his assumption of his interpretation of what the FDA is trying to do, in which he got absolutely zero clarification on the FDA on, is something they're able to do. That's great, bruh. One problem. Did you go to the FDA to get any clarification before you made all these assumptions and judgment calls? Because it is glaringly clear to me that you and your colleagues absolutely did not. Did you actually read the FDA decision where it is made quite clearly That the FDA was not just banning this device for the particular inhumane reasons that are used at the JRC. Because that's not what they said, Karen. They said ban the device in in its entirety for being used for any reason. Because it's very obvious substantial risk of harm. We're going to go ahead and close on that, folks. I did say it would be short. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit the like button. Hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit those comments. I do appreciate your time. As always, folks, we here at Spilling Tea do hope you have a good one. I'll see you in a few minutes for the next vid. And hopefully no more interruptions to my day.